everybody, Jennifer McCreeth. It's October 22nd, 2014. It might actually be the 23rd by now. It's been a long day, past midnight. 13 hours ago, I was awakened by a phone call. A dear friend of mine, uh, Brittany Davidson, uh, who knew that uh, the news she had to tell me would be very important. Um, you could say I was awake very quickly. Terrorist attack in Ottawa, including shots fired in the Parliament buildings. As it turns out, a uh, armed forces soldier was shot dead while he was uh, ceremonially standing at the war memorial. <coughs> Moments later, this gunner proceeded to steal a car, drive to the Parliament buildings, walk right in, open fire. Luckily, security, uh, including the Sergeant of Arms, were able to shoot him down quickly before he could cause harm to anyone else. It, luckily, nobody was killed inside the building from what we've heard. This really hits close to home. I spent a lot of time in Ottawa. It's a family history there. Don't talk about it a lot. But, uh, my mom and my dad both lived in Ottawa in the 60s. And and then they spent a couple years in Kingston. One went to school or the other worked and vice versa. My father, at a very young age, got his first job, one of his first early jobs, in, on Parliament Hill. And I think those experiences uh, intrigued my mom to get into public policy. Fifty years later, my mom spent over 30 years in the Ontario government as a senior policy analyst and did some amazing work. She's now enjoying her retirement. My father answered the bell when his, his beloved political party came calling asked him if he would consider being a candidate in 2000, or 1988, the 1988 federal election. <coughs> he said, sure, why not? Lo and behold, he went out and campaigned his butt off, and he won a seat. Little me, what, 15, 14? The next four and a half years. I'd be going to Ottawa and uh, introduced to the institution known as the parliamentary system, British parliamentary system, which we have here. Um, I got to learn what it's like to go in and, and actually see our government. These people we vote for, what do they actually do? They make pretty important decisions about our country. They conduct serious business. They vote on bills, legislations. Behind the 300 MPs, there's thousands of neutral public servants that are doing constant work, research, analysts, reading, learning, partnering, and it all makes its way back. What can we do to make this city, city, province, country better? <clears throat> and as a family member, I had, a, I had an all-access pass. I could go just about anywhere I wanted in that building. And it was intriguing, even at a young age, to just go in and sit and listen to the politicians. That's so long ago. The Prime Minister was Brian Mulroney. Um, and it was just, it was a tremendous ex opening, ex eye-opening experience for me. I, I learned a lot of respect for our democracy, the process we have, the tradition, that T Peace Tower. Go see it. Climb up to the top. It's an amazing view. I would later, uh, right out of high school, take a summer job with the, uh, as a civil servant with the federal government. And uh, I would later return working as a civil servant in uh, 2006. Um, probably made three or four trips to Ottawa every year between 88 and 92. Um, I've been, there. I've been back once or twice since. Not a lot of times. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what this video is supposed to be. Um, um, it's just, it is, it's shocking to see something like this happen. To think that uh, if this is indeed a, an ISIS, uh, to think that 
I mean, I don't, I totally don't get the concept of suicide bombers, which, in this case, the guy knew he was going to get himself shot by what he was doing. <coughs> All in the name of religion? Really? Religion? I don't know what Bible or religious books you're reading, but I don't think any of the ones that are recognized or well known say anything about doing something like that. And it's, it's, it's scary to think that I don't call them religious organizations, even if they're using the, the Islam, the Muslim le logo. They're not. These are murderers. These are killers. These are terrorists. These are people who have literally either been brainwashed or just don't give a damn. They're very dangerous. And it's not every day. I'm sure it's traumatizing for people to see police running up and down the streets with guns. I'm going to turn this video now over to the other issue here in Newfoundland lately, concern over Royal Newfoundland Constabulary's recruiting ad, which shows them in full gear. You know what? Yes, police work is very, very unsafe, unpredictable, and dangerous. I know. I spent 16 months working in the police department answering telephone calls from the public. I know exactly what goes on, or what did go on, in this city and the surrounding, surrounding areas. Sure, some of the calls were petty. A lot of them were not. A lot of them were pretty urgent, serious situations. We need police here, there's violence. We need police here, somebody's been hurt. We need police here, there's a suspicious person with a gun and we have no clue who he is or what he's doing. Those type of phone calls come in. and. You definitely want people who are capable to respond to those situations and not crumble under the uh, anxieties or the intimidations. Let me let you into another little secret. Cops are the good guys. And no, they're not all these Rambo-type, trigger-hungry, whatever the media wants to make them out to be. I met just about every constable and sergeant and staff sergeant that works out of the St. John's office. And I've had deep, lengthy conversations with a lot of them, both personal and business. I've had many business conversations with them about some of their work. My job, I answer the phone, I take the call. Eventually, the call leads to an officer needing to be dispatched. Well, when the officer comes in, you always want to figure out how did things go, what's next. And Sometimes they're not allowed to even tell me what uh, what went on, but there's that working relationship, there's that rapport that's there. And I can tell you that the RNC employs some of the most amazing and professional people. A lot of them are very down to earth. Some of them are stoic, but let me tell you, um, I trust each and every one of them. I feel privileged and honored to have worked with them for 16 months. Sure, I've raised some concerns that uh, they might want to bring a few more civilians in there to do some business uh, and policy. And I mean, police officers are great at being police officers, but they're not necessarily the best at doing other type of certain non-police tasks. That's the only minor complaint, and and to this ad agency, that wasn't this isn't even the RNC at all. This is the RNC union hiring a private marketing company to put together a video. Um, that video is just one small piece of their recruiting program overall. They go out and they and they hold sessions. And let me also tell you, it is a tough, grueling. Is a twelve step. It's not easy. You don't just walk in off the street and get a police badge. They weed out all the ones that aren't going to be good, or can't do it, or whatever, not qualified, not capable. So don't be afraid. All these people over at the university that are afraid of uh, police officers walking into the school, some of them take part-time courses, and they show up to class in uniform because they don't have time to get changed. Is it intimidating knowing that there's a an armed officer sitting beside you? Maybe at first. I mean, yeah, it was a little different for me walking in. I'm used to seeing people in business attire, and I'm, now I'm just walking into a building where 99% of the people are wearing uh, police 
uniforms and are carrying guns, but you know what? There's not nothing to be worried about. They're not going to shoot me. They're not going to shoot anyone unless it's absolutely friggin' god awful, god darn necessary. So sit back, people. Let's take a breath. Police. I know there's talk police versus armed forces. We all need to work together. Justice, whatever you want to call it, new department, public safety, justice, solicitor general, attorney general. There, I used to work for the attorney general in Ontario. That's what they called their minister. One of their two ministries. I've done a lot of great work, actually. You might want to consider hiring me as an analyst or a consultant or whatever. A PR person. <sighs> but yeah, ultimately, let's not get soft. We need to be aware of what's going on in our world today. September 11th, 2001. I could talk all day about that. Wake up call, okay? <clears throat> support your police force. And support your country. And, uh... Yeah, um... Shocking. Oh, I'm back, back to the today's event incident. Um... Yeah. I mean, I walked around Ottawa as a teenager, a young kid, visited all those sites, spent a lot of time at the War Memorial, um, in and out of the Parliament buildings, East Block, West Block, their Confed building, which is down the road. I've eaten in the Parliamentary Dining Room. I've had lunch with Kim Campbell. I've been to Brian Mulroney's birthday party. Um, rubbed shoulders, shook hands, and had chats with other with Joe Clark. Um, So yeah, I mean, I grew up around people in the business, so I know that it's not an easy business. And politicians awfully get harshly labeled. And some of them are, sure. There's, there's Some of them are corrupt, some of them are incompetent. I bet you every one of them does a really hard work. They do hard work. Eight, 18 hours a day. Dad already put in nine hour days at, at the hill and a few five more hours in his office. And guess what? Can't even go out to supper unless he's got a beeper because he might be called back to the house for a vote. And <clears throat> you scrutinize. Um, it's you, you get the media gets all over your case about petty things and makes them seem like you've ruined the world. You need to have a lot of respect for our members of parliament as well. But if we don't agree with their policies, no. I still have political desires of my own. Um, I ran unsuccessfully to become a uh, city councillor last year in the city here, St. John's, Newfoundland. I did fairly well in a, in a very small last minute campaign, which has given me th thought and hope that uh, if there is going to be a round two, I'll have a much higher chance of doing better. Um, love the t that. To me, that's a dream drop. I want to serve either the province or the country as a uh, member of parliament or a member of, member of provincial parliament and uh, yeah this makes me want this today's incident makes me want to get involved even more and be a part of that team of leadership that steers this country in the right direction be ultimately I guess I'm I'm stunned shocked disbelief, disbelief anger concern um, wake up call, all these these are things going through my mind. Poor victim, I don't know. Um, 24 year old, has a 5 year old uh, son. Um, he was just doing his job. As uh, Rex Murphy said tonight, it wasn't just so, it wasn't just the fact that this terrorist shot him. It's, 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 it's a core of a message of hatred. I'm not just shooting someone. I'm shooting an armed services member Remember the Canadian Armed Forces, they're going to shoot them at the War Memorial just a couple of weeks before Remembrance Day. I mean, that's... I can't remember what, what Rex said, but I wanted to repeat his verse. Absolutely appalling. Um, sometimes we've got to have a little more security. Maybe we've got to compromise privacy. If there's terrorists, I want my government to find them and put them somewhere that they can do no harm to others.
yeah, I'll, I'll stop talking for now. I just thought mm, it would be important to capture my thoughts on uh, this historic, sad, difficult day. And, uh, yeah, I'm Jennifer Creeth. Uh, thanks for watching.